everything was changing. The public's perception of science, which we had spent years cultivating and manipulating, was being lost. In its wake, a new, enlightened knowledge of science was growing. A selected group seemed to be spreading these new ideas, debunking our stereotypes and warning the public of them. The image of the scientists, previously so prevalent in the public's mind, was being questioned thanks to this group. The media no longer had control of this image. The theatricality we used to portray science and its discoveries was now under analytical eyes, waiting to unwrap the mysteries. As if this were not bad enough, the same group had gone a step further. They had found the dangerous place where science and religion peacefully coexisted. Rather than the never-ending battle of science and spirituality, they had discovered the continuities between the two, a side where one could peacefully believe in both, an idea which had been long lost. So how had this happened? Carl Guyverson and James Petty. We had heard rumors of these prophets spreading the truth to young minds. Both are highly trained and educated, and were using their knowledge against us. But for now, they were only suspects. This was my mission, to find the evidence needed to, change these two, to charge these two, put an end to these dangerous ideas. We had a lead, Samantha Pucko, an alleged student of Guyverson and Petty, and the spreader of truth. Miss Pucko was dangerous, I knew that, but she was my only lead. meeting with me today, Ms. Pucko. Well, I'm not sure how much choice I have in the matter. <laughs> I'd like to ask you some questions about the class you've been taking, the Big Bang Theory. Ask me what you like. I have nothing to hide. Of course you don't. Let's start simple. If I asked you to depict a scientist, what would you say? Would you say he wears a lab coat, has giant glasses, is geeky and socially inept? Huh. Never. You are blinded by these stereotypes. Theater, television, movies have distorted your view of these images. Mad scientists, geeky scientists, evil scientists are all just characters. They are used in art to relay messages. They are not real. And what messages are these characters trying to portray? The power of knowledge. How once it is known, it can never be unlearned and lead to power, and therefore must be treated with caution. How scientists are responsible for their discoveries. Plays like Galileo, the physicists, experiment with an air pump, are sending these messages to the audience, not promoting your precious stereotypes. Let's play, Samantha, nothing more! You'd like to believe that. But they show the power of science through their characters. You're being deceived by Guyverson and Petty. They're trying to make you fear science. Not fear. Just be careful of. There's no way of unlearning knowledge. We must be careful with what we learn. Tell me about conscious theatricality. How do you know about that? We've been following you, Sam. We know that's all you ever talk about. Then you should already know. It is the way an author makes it clear to the audience that what they are seeing is fiction. It is a means to convey the message the author is trying to share. Science plays you- And what is the definition of a science play? I don't know. Yeah, we never got around to it. That seems like something that should have happened. <laughs> you think, wouldn't you know? <laughs> What do you want to know? Is it true that Guyverson openly taught the ideas of the Big Bang Theory and Darwin's evolution, while also claiming that these theories do not disprove religious ideas? Is it true that he does not see that the ideas presented in these theories irrefutably disprove the existence of a higher power? Yes, and all he taught was true. There should not be this disconnect you've created in your head. Science and religion do not need to be favored over one another. If anything, theories like the Big Bang beg for a creator. But he's spoken out against many creationist foundations. He has argued for teaching evolution over creationism against some of the most homeschooled minds of our time. Do not be a replacement for science. Religious beliefs have no place in a science classroom. Carl teaches that. While science and religion should be taught separately, they do not contradict one another. And what about the God of the Gaps approach? Ha! Don't you see that by using the gaps in our scientific knowledge as proof of religious existence, we stand in the way of progress? Questions can never be answered if we believe that God does not want us to know them. That is what Carl wants you to believe! No! The Big Bang Theory taught me to think for myself for the first time in my life. See clearly. Never before had I noticed the influence theatricality puts on the view of science. Now, 
I have exposed those harmful cliches. I can interpret and understand the messages presented in plays about science, unlearning knowledge, and the power of progress. The points of the authors are clear. I see the unity of science and religion in a way you will never be able to. I do not see them as challengers, but equal and separate entities, both worth respect. I can never again see religion as a substitute for science or vice versa. You could try and stop me from going to the class, but you will never be able to take away what I have learned and discovered, and what more are bound to discover. It cannot be done, nor should it be. People should know the influence that art has, as well as the powers of science and religion, and if you are smart, you will help them learn. Um.